Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearlism, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. B-Pal Picks Edition. That's right, B-Pal Picks. The Patreon of Frolic, where all the frolic in the land is. If you would like my picks seven days a week, also I do MMA, I do tennis, killer, killer, killer tennis picks. Even if you don't like tennis, you like making money? Because I'm up big on tennis. Baseball picks by B. He's the B part of pal. Professor Joe Boric. By the way, go check out his uh, channel too, Sports Fanatic News. The guy's freaking amazing. Uh, anyways, so we are going to talk about all 14 games we got. So we got a lot to get into. Uh, hit the subscribe and the bell. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your Perlocopter to, to in a freshly lubed uh, Perlocopter. Right to your door. You and the kids can sit out in the backyard and they put it, send it. I don't know how they do it. I've never seen them do it. But it's something like you can go in the backyard and everybody does a Perlo dance. and They all gather around the Pearls of Wisdom necklace and they throw it in the air. And there's lots of frolic. So, so that's why I hit the subscribe button. Okay, let's go look at some cool stuff that people talked about in the comment section. And then we'll do the picks. Okay, uh, here we go. Comment. Where is it? It's here. Here we go. Let's make sure everybody can see this okay. There we go. Okay, good show. I just watched the thing. I think he was, it was Kenny R was trying to say the whole thing there. I do that all the time. You ever do that? You're right. You're, you're like texting people and you just, your brain just says, yeah, we don't need that word. Screw that word. And you don't because I figured it out real quick. Uh, thanks for Kenny for saying that too, by the way, Patreon subscriber. Awesome. Kenny, uh, just, just came on board for free. You get it for free. If you go on, I'll give you a month for free. If you want to quit before the end of the month or at the end of the month and not pay anything, do so. That's fine. You probably won't though. Uh, I'm trying to sign up on Patreon. Oh, that's Ashley. Ashley did sign up. Awesome. So that's another member. Uh, thanks for coming out. And we helped him out how to do that. And everything worked out great. Um, what's up, Perlo? I love you. What you do. Great picks always, man. Oh, thank you. You're you're awesome overseer as well. My problem is that I do a lot of parlays like five to seven teams. I hit sometimes, but not as much as I should with all your good info. I'm not sure about that. Five to seven pick parlays are pretty difficult to do. I do three to four pick parlays, and this year I'm hitting at about 35 to 40%, which puts me up. But I don't recommend parlays anyways. Last year I was at 50%, and that's probably the best I ever did. I don't recommend them. You also mentioned here that you watch Professor MJ. Professor MJ certainly doesn't recommend doing parlays. Professor MJ and I both run on a system where over the long term, you make money. Uh, he is an investment gambler, so or better. So he does and has an algorithm that gives you picks that are dog picks that most likely are going to come through. And in the long run, you will be up. I am a hedge bet uh, handicapper. I bet all the games and I bet over unders based on odds to give the most amount of money per session over time to make you a lot of money. Like over the season now, I'm up about 45 units if you bet all my picks for hockey. That is a really good season. Not too many people are going to be do that. Now, if you're going to do parlays and have fun, do it. Cool. I recommend, I hope you're doing it with fun money and you're just having a blast doing what you're doing. I got nothing against that. You just go ahead and do that. But if you're doing it to try to make money, it's probably not the best way to go. Uh, the, the happy Perlo, you are amazing. I, Daniel, you're amazing for saying that people are amazing. The more people that tell people they're amazing, 
the more they are amazing and the more amazing that there is, right? That's what I say. It should not make any sense at all. You're all amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. You're, you, are, you're, you are amazing. You are great. I'm going, uh, Ethan Locke did a parlay. He went Toronto and rag, Carolina and rag, and Oilers and rag. And you, as well as me, did not hit Carolina and rag. They ticked me off, too. So we didn't hit it. Uh, we did. We were up seven units for the week. Uh, we hit uh, Sunday. We hit this one. We had Tampa Bay un and the under. Tampa Bay and rag in the under. So killer. It was good. And uh, uh, Saturday we did well, but we were about seven units for the week. I won't go into all of those games because we got a lot of games to get into. And we're going to get in them, into them now. Okay. Let's go. Move this down. Uh, Scroll ourselves up here. I'll try to get these off pretty quick. All right, everybody can see that now. Perfect. I had to do this video twice because the last time I didn't have uh, it centered. Okay, Buffalo versus the New York Islanders. I'm going the Islanders here, ML, and under five and a half. Mostly because Tokarski is in that. I'm actually, this isn't as cut and dry as you think. Buffalo's going to surprise some teams here. I just don't think the Islanders are the team right now. They've just started gelling really well. They uh, got their game. They seem to be able to take the Rangers at will. Um, but with Tokarski in that, because that kid, Lukanen, got injured last time, and they have no other goaltenders to throw in, really. Tukarski's not the greatest goaltender, and I think the Islanders will out defense Buffalo quite a bit here and take it under five and a half. Carolina versus Chicago. Carolina's actually fairly tired here. They played five of their last eight games. And uh, I, get, I get over here. Um, so I'm only taking them on the money line. Highly recommend you get over to. This opening app, they give you great odds on favorites. You can get it at 145. Uh, I, as much as I think that Carolina is tired here, and they are, I also think Chicago as a team is tired. They have a lot of guys like Pia Suter, um, Korachev. Um, and just new guys that have never played in the NHL in the condensed season. If you've been watching my show, which you can catch three to five Eastern, we have a lot of fun on that show. We, uh, it's inter completely interactive. You can get it on this channel. Um, and, uh, we do picks and all kinds of stuff. Go, I'd highly recommend you check it out. But I talked about how I thought Chicago was going to fade down the stretch because of that. And they are. So Carolina's tired, Chicago's tired uh, in a lot of ways. I think Carolina will still win the game. I just don't think in reg is a very good thing. Um, I also think it's very possible that they can beat Chicago by more than one. So otherwise, I'd be leaning more to Chicago puck line here because you're getting a really good 183 on it. But... Um, I think Carolina's got enough juice to win this, like 2 4 nothing, 4 2 or something like that, if Nedeljkovic is in net. Now, if they decide not to put Nedeljkovic in net here, I actually think I'll go back to that and say Chicago puck line. If you're a Patreon member, I update that throughout the day. So that's one of the services you can get for doing that. And the, and the link for that is in the uh, description. Or you can ask for it in the comment section, and I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, also, the total here I'm not a fan of any which way. Um, I'm going to lean the under with two tired teams, especially if Nedeljkovic is in net, but I'm not huge on it. 
Boston versus New Jersey. I got to go Boston in regulation. New Jersey just beat up a Philadelphia Flyers team that didn't even really try. I think they could be confident coming in here, but maybe even a little bit overconfident. Um, uh, This Boston team is on a mission right now. I don't think they're going to have a letdown against New Jersey here. I really don't. I think they are in a – Cassidy is a great coach. Playoffs are coming. They want to be the ball rolling hard going into those playoffs. And, and, And Boston hasn't been playing their game completely all year. So they're going to want to have that in place. Take no prisoners. I take Boston ML. I also take over five and a half here. New Jersey's defense is too poor, Um, especially if they don't go with Blackwood in this one. Watch the goaltending here. I don't know if they're going to go with Blackwood here or are they going to take Blackwood and put him in when they're a little more tired the next game. Uh, Either way, they're going to win, lose one of these games. I I think if they're smart, they put Blackwood here when they got full legs and they might have a chance against Boston, but... We'll see. There's a whole bunch of stuff that can happen there. But right now I'm taking Boston in regulation and over. Washington versus the Rangers. I'm taking the Rangers here. Money line. And I know they've looked not too great as of late. But they've had a little time now, I believe. Uh, They've had, when's the last time the Rangers played? Okay, they played against the Islanders uh, on the road. They're coming back home, and they feel feeling defeated, but now the pressure's off. I, I just think the pressure's off in this one now, and they will um, come back with a vengeance, not to mention Washington has a problem on the road against New York all the time. I've been burnt by it so many times, it's ridiculous. Plus, Shesterkin's going to be a net. Just call it a gut feeling. I probably won't throw a ton on it. Uh, With the total, they're giving you over. Okay, if you can go over to opening, you can get over five and a half. Go do that. Over under six, it feels like the total to me. But with all this offense, I'm probably going to go the over. But I don't think I'm going to put much on either one of those on that game. Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia. I'm taking Pittsburgh all day. Philadelphia just mailed it in pretty much, I think. Uh, Their defense, their goaltending is not strong enough. That's really affected their forwards and their defense. Really, when it comes down to it, I think Philadelphia's big problem is they got to get some better goaltending in the offseason to solidify the confidence of the players that they have. But they don't have it. They don't, it doesn't seem like they believe in their goaltenders. And in that being this case, I think Pittsburgh wins this. I'm going to go the over. Philadelphia's defense is too bad. They should be able to pot one or two against Jari, uh, maybe even three. So I'll take Pittsburgh and the over. Nashville versus Columbus. Um, a lot of people are going to be rolling with Columbus here at home because they um, – they're playing teams tough. They just had a tough one against Carolina. Uh, they have players that are playing for jobs right now. The thing is, so does Nashville. Nashville has players playing for them right now that are um, we're kind of surprised that they're in the NHL right now because they had so many injuries that they got an opportunity. They're still in there, and they're wanting to play for a contract for either Nashville or somebody else next year. That's a lot of motivation to play for a, co- a contract in comparison to an AHL contract in the NHL. Like, you know, we're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, so they have the same motivation, but Nashville also has a motivation that they're in a playoff uh, position now, but they want to solidify with Dallas coming up on their tail and still have game on, games in hand. So that it's a double-edged sword there. Merzlikens has been playing really well for Columbus. I don't think Columbus is going to be able to score enough to push this to an over, even at five. 
And Nashville isn't the most prolific scoring team either. So we'll go the under five. Toronto versus Montreal. I'm taking Toronto all day. Um, Montreal has been way too inconsistent. Also, with Allen in net on a regular basis, and I'm hearing it may even be Primo again. Against uh, Primo is just a little too green to be playing in a game like this against a Toronto team that can shoot with guys like Matthews, Nylander, all of those guys like that. They should be able to eat them up. They don't seem to be having any letdown at all. They're a team on a mission right now. They're feeling good about themselves. Now, I'm going to take Toronto in regulation, and I'm going to go over five and a half. Trends say under. I just think Toronto against Allen. And Montreal has guys like Toffoli and stuff that can pot a couple. The over seems likely to me. Winnipeg versus Ottawa. Winnipeg has lost six in a row. I think this is where they end it. I'm going to take Winnipeg money line. They're short on confidence right now, but Ottawa and them are two of the same type of team right, teams. They're both very hardworking teams. I don't think Winnipeg has been getting outworked. It's their defense has been faltering, and Halibach has been having some difficulties himself. I'm banking that they turn it around here. Maybe even go with Brassois in net against Hobart and pull out the victory here. Uh, they have been having problems scoring, so I will go the under six here. Both uh, Winnipeg has been having problems scoring, so I'm going to go the under six. Dallas versus Florida. I think Florida puts to rest Dallas here. They're playing. They're playing too hardcore right now. Uh, Dallas has got some injuries. Florida does too, but their overall game with uh, Sam Bennett playing up the middle right now. Uh, they just they're they're flowing. You know what I mean? They're flowing. Um. We'll find out who's in net. I'm hearing it's going to be Spencer Knight. I like him a lot. Uh, so we'll go under under five and a half. Yeah. I'm not sure about the total so much. Florida can pot him, put him away like crazy too. So I'm, right now I'm going under. Minnesota versus Vegas. I'm going to take the dog at home here. Minnesota over Vegas. Vegas is really, they, they, they went through that 9-10 game winning streak. Um, although they have great veterans there, I just have a feeling there's a little bit of a letdown compared to what Minnesota is going to bring. Minnesota needs is trying to prove himself again, get their uh, confidence back after losing to St. Louis in a couple games. Dean Evison is a great motivator, a great coach. I think they'll be highly motivated for this game. And Vegas plays a game that's more suited for their strengths. With Talbot in net, I think it'll be a close one. I, I don't think it's going to be uh, a blowout by any stretch. Um, I'm going to lean the over, but I'm not huge on the total. But with this kind of firepower, it's kind of hard not to go over on a five and a half here. Uh, St. Louis versus Anaheim. I'm going to take St. Louis. Uh, Anaheim just blew out uh, L.A. I think they're feeling pretty good about themselves. But St. Louis is going to take no prisoners here. St. Louis isn't a team that's, not going, to, that's going to shake Miller's hand after it's all over with, like L.A. This is a team that is getting back to playoff base mode. They're getting into destruction mode. That's the way St. Louis plays this time of year. And, and uh, O'Reilly, who is, uh, um, is a uh, Selkie Trophy Award winner, he plays, he's a, he's a great person, but he is also an awesome competitor. And when it comes down to it in this time of year, they're trying to get to that point where they're in playoff mode. And I think Anaheim is going to be in the wake I'm taking St. Louis, and I'm taking the, with Gibson and Ned, I'll go the under. Uh, Anaheim will probably keep it on the tight side, but I'm not huge on the total. L.A. versus Arizona, this is a weird game. Um, 
Arizona, they're both out. They're both going to be feeling kind of loose here. I just think Arizona need, Arizona doesn't have the draft pick and stuff like that. Like winning to them is getting a winning environment is to me where they're at right now, where Los Angeles maybe is like a little in still in disappointment mode that they didn't get to where they needed to be. And I think Arizona will win this money line at 175. I'll take the home team here. And with Kemper and Peterson, we'll go the under. Edmonton over Vancouver. Vancouver was pooched out out east already. They just played a, a Eastern road swing. And we're already pooched out. Looks like the effects of COVID has really taken over this team. They're tired. Flying across Canada through three time zones is not going to be much help to that. And now you're playing against a speedy team like Edmonton. I'm going Edmonton. Going in regulation. You might even want to puck line this, although I'm not big on the puck line this time of year. I'm going to just in reg it. And uh, I'll probably go the over here too. Uh, feels like it could be a blowout, honestly. Uh, you're getting 205 on the over here. This feels like a blowout. Uh, so, you know, that's why I could go puck line. I just don't like going puck line this time of year because teams tend to play tight. Um, and this is a situation where Edmonton should be fairly loose. They got a playoff spot now. Vancouver is not really a threat to them. Uh, they could really run up the score here. Colorado versus San Jose. Um, I'm going to take Colorado. I don't know what San Jose thinks they're doing, but in regulation, come on, Colorado, start beating teams like San Jose handily now, can you please? I'm hoping Grubauer is in net. Is he? He's not injured, is he? Uh, no, he's not. Should be in net. Bad part is they got Graves and Gerard possibly out on defense. It's day to day. Gerard is out, out, I think. He'll be out for two weeks, yeah. So I'm going to say San Jose is able to score a couple on Colorado because of losing those two kinds of defensemen. Although they've got enough defensive depth to be able to absorb it and still have a better defense than San Jose. Jones should be in net here, and he's actually not the better goaltender right now. The Coronar kid is better. So I'm going to take Colorado, and I'm going to go back to the logic that this should be going over, over six. Okay, that's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, hit that subscribe, hit the like, and I'll send you a pearls of wisdom necklace and all that. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.